message is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, 28 speak about God's providential care. It has been called the Mount Everest of Romans because Romans 8 to 8 is the pinnacle in the book of Romans. If Romans is the meal, Romans 8 to 8 is the main course. Christian writer R.A. Torrey call Romans 8 to 8 a soft below for a tired heart. So this is my message to you. Romans 8 to 8. First, uh, let me show you a picture of uh, the Temple Mount the Temple Mount in the Holy Land. On the top left, the yellow color, yellow top building is the dome, dome of the rock. And all the, and the wall, the wall in the middle is the Western wall. The Western wall is the last, remaining wall from the second temple period. A lot of people go there to pray in front of the wall, especially the, the rabbi and all the pilgrims. There are holes in the wall, in the western wall, and the pilgrims Usually, they write prayer requests onto pieces of paper, and they put it put it onto the the holes of the wall. Actually, this is not the actual wall. This is this is this is only a reconstruction of the western wall. The original. Western wall is underground, exactly on the same spot, but it's under the ground. You can actually go, go inside the a tunnel. There's a tunnel under the ground where uh, pilgrims can go and have a look at the original Western wall. So Romans 8 to 8, this is a verse that speaks about God's providential care. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. The words can be broken down into five parts. And we know that's part one, that all things, part two, work together, part three, for good, part four, to those who love God and are called according to his purposes, to his purpose, part five. So part one, uh, we, and we know, okay, and we know. So we have confidence. We have confidence in God's providential care. Second Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Okay. Cast all your anxiety on Jesus 
because Jesus cares for you. God's care for you, God's providential care for you is a certainty. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. So God says, God's promise to us, he will not forsake us, he will not forget us. Trust God. Have confidence in God. Because we know, we know, we know that all things work together for good. Do not worry. You are worth more than sparrows. Matthew 10, 29 to 31, Jesus' own words, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered, so do not fear you are more valuable than many sparrows. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. John 14.1 Jesus' own words again. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. So do not worry. God cares for us and God will look after us. The, uh, sec, section number two. You are completely covered. For we know that all things, second part, all things. Proverbs 3 to 5, trust in the Lord your God with all your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. All things include things in the past, things in the present, things in the future. Big things, small things, important things, trivial things, and everything. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, With people, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. No matter how difficult, It is possible to be soft by God. Romans 8.31 If God is for us, who can be against us? And Romans 8.39 For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus says that he, I am the Alpha and the Omega. God's providential care for you is comprehensive. He is Alpha and Omega, Alif and Tau, first and last, beginning and end. 
Revelation 1 8. Hebrews 12 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Three, point number three. All things work together for you. For all things, for we know that all things work together. God maneuvers all your life circumstances together cohesively to accomplish his purpose in you, for you and through you. God is the master chess player. No matter what move you make, he will still be in control in the game. God's comprehensive knowledge about you is beyond your comprehension. Psalm 139, 4-5, verses 4-5. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hand me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Psalm 139, verse 13. You created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Psalm 139, 16. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So the psalmist talks about God's comprehensive care. And God, because he knows everything about us, His providential care for us is complete and comprehensive. Point number four, God's ultimate goal for good. For we know that in all things, God, for we know that In all things, God work together for good. So the point of four is for good. God is working for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week behind the scene to ensure that everything happened for you and not to you. Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. This is according to Paul. John, John 5.17 Jesus said, my father is working until now, and I myself is working. So God's ultimate goal is for everything to work out together for good, for your good. Point number five, a conditional promise to those who love God. For we know that in all things, God work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So this is a conditional promise for born again Christian. To those who love God, 
speaks of those who are born again as a Christian. So you cannot claim this promise if you are not a born again Christian. It is a conditional promise. One example of Romans 8 to 8 is the life of Joseph. In the, in the book of Genesis chapter 20, Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery to Egypt. He became a slave to Potiphar. He was falsely accused by Mrs. Potiphar and thrown into prison. Against all odds, he became the prime minister of Egypt. He saved the lives of his father and his brother. Joseph said in Genesis chapter 50, uh, sorry, it's chapter 50, not chapter 20. Uh, just now I said Genesis chapter 20. Uh, is that wrong? Actually, it's Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. So we have Joseph on the life of Joseph as an example of Romans 8 to 8. I also have a testimony of myself, myself. I myself has encountered Romans 8 to 8 in my life. So I was born at home. You know? you know, when you're born at home, it can be very dangerous you know, without any midwife, without uh, medical facility, without antiseptic. It, it can, it's a dangerous, it's very dangerous. Uh, you, so God, God was there, even when I was born, God was there. The providence of God was already there to save my life. At the age of one year, I had measles. And according to my parents, I was very ill. I was admitted to the hospital with severe dehydration, high fever, yeah, but miracul miraculously, I, I, I was, I recovered. According to, according to my parents, I was near that. I was almost at the point of that, of dying. Now, during my childhood, I, I almost drowned. I, almost, I went swimming in the river. I, I was almost drowned, but someone rescued me someone dragged me out of the water before I went down into the water. During my childhood, I fell down from a tree. I had severe backache for three to four weeks, three to four weeks. In those days, I, I didn't go for x-rays. I didn't go to seek um, medical advice. I was just resting in the house. Then during my childhood, there was once when I had severe allergy after coming into contact with certain plants or, or the allergy was, was quite, was so bad. It's something like, a, something like a Steven Johnson syndrome. It's very severe allergy. I encountered the gospel in my primary school. I attended chapel service. And one day I heard the story of the ghost prodigal son. I heard the story of the prodigal son in primary school. Of course, there are so many other Bible stories. 
but the most significant was the prodigal, the prodigal son. Then I, I encountered the gospel in Form 6. I encountered the gospel in the university through classmates, huh? through classmates and university mates. I was born again as a Christian in 1976. I, read, I rededicated my life to Christ in Wesley Methodist Church, the look in Tan in 1986. I encountered good churches, pastors, Christian mentors, Bible teachers, and Christian role models. I received a Bible college education in New Zealand from 1999 to two, 2001. In 2019, I had a near death experience. I had tetraplegia, paralysis of hands and feet due to an accident. I had a miraculous healing and I, I thank God, no? I thank God for rescuing me and for healing me. After the, ex after the miraculous healing in 2019, I, I was, I was, I embark on a book writing. I embark on writing books through the through the influence, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I wrote. I was able to write eight books from two zero two zero to two zero two one. So my life testimony. was a Roman 8 to 8, was, was, a, was an experience, was a good, is a good illustration of Romans 8 to 8. One of the books that I wrote was uh, my autobiography. One, one of the, out of the eight books, one of them is autobiography and it's called Memoirs of a doctor. So thank God, thank God for his mercy, grace, love. Thank God for salvation, justification, forgiveness of sin. And thank God for Good Friday for Easter. I will end my message today with this slide huh? on the top left, the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee and the mountain, two mountain peaks huh? in front of the Sea of Galilee. Bottom left is the sheep, huh? sheep in the Holy Land. Um, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And we are the sheep. Isaiah says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have gone his own way. And the, late, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. On the right panel, on the right hand panel is a picture of the bronze serpent monument, the bronze serpent monument in Mount Nebo, Jordan. This is a huge monument. Uh, this monument refers back to Numbers 21. The Israelites were in the wilderness and were, and 
many of them were eaten by poisonous serpents and they died. Eh? They died. The Israelite cried out to Moses. Moses prayed to God and God told him to make a bronze serpent on a pole and put, put that pole in the wilderness. God told Moses to tell the Israelites, if any of them has been bitten by the serpent, they, would, they should look at the bronze serpent and whoever look to the bronze serpent will live and not die. This bronze serpent is a foreshadow of Jesus Christ hanging on the pole on Good Friday. Is a foreshadow of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ in Calvary. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to pay the penalty of sin for us. Whoever looked to Jesus, believed in Jesus and receive him as Lord and Savior will have eternal life, will have their sins forgiven and will have eternal life. That's a, that's a beautiful uh, message of the bronze serpent. That's all I have for you today. Thank you. Follow me for, me for more messages in the near future.